All right, chance to win big tomorrow. The Powerball jackpot is now at an estimated five hundred ninety million dollars. Oh my yes. goodness! Did you hear? There was no winner in Wednesday night's drawing, yeah. so the next drawing is tomorrow night with a three hundred four point eight million cash value. How about that? Woo! Not quite enough to make me quit. <laughs> I don't, you know, we've already had this conversation. Yes. It, it, you know, I don't know what it will take. You, you're just planning on sitting there until the day you. Um, I, like the yeah. 89 year old umpire, yeah, yeah. you're going to have to keep it going. Keep, just it, keep going. it going. I understand. I'm looking at like the numbers that are drawn most frequently, and uh, one of them is 61. So 61. You're, you're welcome, folks. Go ahead and add that to your list in the evening. Hey, uh, uh, man, our temperatures have been well above all those Powerball numbers. Doesn't it only go to like 70 or 69 or something? So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to be pretty steamy in the next couple afternoons. Uh, seeing that hottest stretch of afternoon temperatures since 2016, Lou. And Lauren, we are watching what's going on at Southside and JTB. A live look at the uh, one of the on ramps there from JTB onto Southside. I'm going to show you on the maps, kind of take a bigger look so you know exactly what you're driving into. This is Good Morning Jacksonville, First Coast News on your side. This is Good Morning Jacksonville, First Coast News on your side. As we come on the air at 630, we have to get right to some breaking news we're following that it is impacting your Friday commute. You're looking right now live at JTB. This is on Southside, Southside Boulevard, where crews are investigating a deadly crash on one of the usually very mm. busy off ramps on Jacksonville's South Side. Again, we're going to stay on top of this for you right here on GMJ. We want to welcome you in. I'm Keith Nelson. And I'm Lewis Turner. So we've been watching this 
for about 90 minutes as crews have been on the scene there since really before the sun came up started out uh, in the darkness now sun's coming up they're doing an investigation they're trying to get cleaned up we're going to take a look uh, here at that area live um, again this is the exit ramp from JTB westbound so if you're driving from the beach towards 95 on JTB and getting on Southside Boulevard southbound I'm on your side this morning helping you get around the shutdown for your comm commute I want to get you uh, right to your map because uh, obviously the live shot helps tell the story. The map's going to help us out a lot more navigating around uh, the issue here. All right, so uh, big picture map, all of Jacksonville. We got 295 Beltway, no major delays, right? So no major ones that's going to be slowing us down for an hour at a time. In fact, our drive time from the beaches into 95, whether you're using Atlantic Beach or JTB, the aforementioned, is okay. It's right on time. It is where we reach this one area. So we've got to go from JTB where you get past the town center and you get to south side, right? You, if you are trying to get on to south side from uh, that uh, westbound stretch of JTB, you, you're not going to be able to do it. All right, so the ramp is closed. You're, you're going to have to keep either going straight towards 95 and go southbound that way. But if you wanted to get to the Deerwood Park area, you're going to have to get off a little bit earlier. So you, what you do is you get off at Gate, you head south, then you take that first right that you can. That's Deerwood Park Boulevard, and boom, there you are. And you can get right on the south side that way. Again, take the left, and you're gone. And you're golden. You can get down to the Avenues area, or south side of Jacksonville, or just keep on keeping on a JTV. No major delays to get you to 95 either. However, we'll continue to cover. We'll let you know when that on ramp gets reopened here this morning on GMJ. All right, big weekend in store. We got to look at our forecast. Lauren Routkrantz with us, as she always is. We look at our forecast. Hey, Lauren. Hey, be careful out there this morning, folks, and be careful in the heat. Heat today. We've got another heat advisory in effect for portions of Northeast Florida and even coastal Southeast Georgia. So golfers, where are you? Maybe getting the kids ready to go off to summer camp and you're going to uh, hit some balls out on the course. We are looking at a heat index by mid morning already in those low to mid 90s soaring up to the mid uh, 90s again uh, by the late morning hours and by lunchtime we're looking at 102 getting closer to 110 by the mid afternoon. We've got that three day forecast for your area and focus with those temps in those mid 90s through the weekend. We've just got this rinse and repeat situation with those afternoon thunderstorms. So you'll want to make sure you keep that in mind if you do have outdoor plans and even into the evening. Those storms will linger around the sunset time frame. Right now we're starting off dry and quiet. We had some showers rolling off the coast in places like Mayport down to Ponte Vedra uh, as early as 3 a.m. today. So those those showers lingered for quite some time. We've got some of those clouds off of the coast here, but beautiful sunrise still happening across St. Augustine in that weather stem camera. It is going to be a hot one out there, but we've been used to it, right? We've this will be our 13th day in a row with temps of 94 degrees. Thanks for that, Lauren. And new details this morning on a separate deadly crash. This is in mm. St. Johns County. It shut down northbound Interstate 95 last night, right near the World Golf Village exit. We now know the victim of that crash was just eight years old. An eight-year-old girl died. Florida Highway Patrol says the driver swerved to avoid traffic and lost control and hit a tractor trailer. Now, two other children were in the car as well, a six-month-old and a three-year-old. They both had minor injuries. All right, your top stories this morning at 635. These are two stories connected in a very tragic way. The family of a missing Jacksonville woman now telling us that remains found at a home on the west side are in fact those of their loved one. Heather Shepard's girlfriend Shannon McCarthy is now in custody. Tristan Hardy's on your side this morning. He has the very latest on this investigation. Good morning, Tristan. Good morning, Keith. Uh, Shannon McCarthy is facing charges of domestic violence from an incident back in January. But as soon as human remains were found at her Lakeshore home, her bond was revoked. Now, according to the Justice Coalition, they tell us Heather Shepard, the victim, was reported missing a week ago. Now, according to a police report in January, McCarthy repeatedly punched Shepard in the face multiple times. We're told Shepard's family found her truck with a bullet hole and a stained pair of shoes from McCarthy's home. The 43 year old suspect has not been charged in connection to the discovery of the remains. But while the victim's family tells us the remains are shepherds, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office nor the medical examiner's office could confirm. We also cannot confirm due to the state of decomposition of the body whether this is related to the missing persons case that they were following up on. 
Shepard leaves behind three children. We're live in Jacksonville. I'm Tristan Hardy, First Coast News on your side. Tristan, thank you. A Jacksonville man is now going to spend 25 years in prison after his guilty plea on attempted murder and sex trafficking charges. Prosecutors say 30 year old Zachariah Clark was using social media accounts to communicate with his victims. He then, they say, sex trafficked and stabbed a woman who tried to escape. Again, he has pleaded guilty to this. Detectives say he sex trafficked victims for about a year from January to December of 2020.